<laughs> you got this. All right. Wait, I can I can do it again. Yeah, just sit down and shut the fuck up because you are now watching a sneaker fanatic motherfucking production. <laughs> Xavier is he's entertaining. He's very entertaining. Um, he's a storyteller. He spoke to me for for over three hours. For me, it was kind of hilarious. Some of the stuff he was saying. He's a he's a he's a very good storyteller. Um, and when I say that, I mean he be telling stories. How you interpret what I just said? That's up to you. <laughs> The video is long, like I said, um, so I'm going to be breaking this video up into different parts. And this video right here is one of four. And this video right here is three of four. Hopefully y'all enjoy it. Story telling ass. It's like uh, you was going to go live with the, with the DJ. Um, the DJ battle you had. DJ competition. That you didn't go live for. Okay, so blonde haired, goofy nigga, let me tell you what happened. Did you even win that? I won second place on, on some whole shit. Let me explain what happened, right? Because you was winning by like 60% when I voted. So let me tell you what happened. <laughs> Damn, oh. you, you dropped down to second place? Let me tell you what happened. So they said they was doing a DJ competition. I paid $150 to get in. Me knowing that I let my nuts hang and I'm that nigga, don't nobody play like me. Right? So I did the D so when I got to the club, I had to get to the club at nine o'clock. They didn't start the DJ competition till eleven. We started late as fuck. The nigga that was so what happened was one of the niggas that was in the competition. He's a resident DJ there. It's not a neutral ground. You niggas can't hold. Know. Yeah, niggas know him. You have to hold hey, DJ. Hey, hey, guess what, nigga? That's home court advantage. That's like if that nigga was to come to El Paso and you DJing, knowing the influence you got on El Paso, hey, that it is what it is. I would have hey, to you, try, you try to fight a nigga at home. I, I, would, I would have to. I would have to. Even then, if I was do, if I was DJing. In my own, it's like if I was the DJ in El Paso and hold a DJ competition slash battle, it wasn't even no competition. Like, really, motherfuckers here in Central Texas, they all fuck with who played the best music in a certain order the same way. They're not focused on that, focus on that scratch and transition type shit. Like, who could kick the crowd lit with a certain set of songs? So, with the DJ competition they had, had I hear it. Now, mind you, Everywhere I've been to DJ in, only two places. I've been that nigga, can't nobody fuck with me. I don't offer niggas a rat to battle me. I don't have to offer three grand for a nigga to battle me. I don't give a fuck. Niggas is scared of me out here, right? Respectfully, right? Because I'm just that nigga. I let my nuts hang. And I go to El Paso and I tell a nigga, if me and you was to go back and forth on some ratchet shit, bitch, you would not beat me. That's for everybody else out there. Even my mentor. Matter of fact, anybody in El Paso can get it right now. That's from El Paso. They've been DJing El Paso for years. Fuck all that extra shit for niggas from Mississippi and Atlanta and shit. Y'all niggas weak. I play the same shit y'all niggas play. You're the so, best DJ in El Paso. If I was to go back to El Paso right now, I would shit on niggas. Easily. I got, matter of fact, I got $2,000 of my own money. If a nigga was to come to me with his own money, which I know you don't got, because you're not getting paid shit in El Paso anyway, because... The promoter that's paying you anyway, that's cheap. If you if you ain't working for no Mexicans, you're getting paid cheap under the table. I ain't trying to throw no shade up on them. Bitch, come with your arm. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Because I know you ain't paying. If you if you a nigga paying another nigga for you to DJ, you ain't paying them what the fuck. You either splitting the pot and doing what the band. So, Trayvon and fucking... Um, the light skinned nigga with the dreads. I know you ain't getting paid worth a fuck. I know this shit. I'm talking shit. Hope y'all see this too. Do not ask me to come to El Paso and be like, okay, nigga, battle me. Then, nigga, you're dead. You're dead as fuck. I'm the best DJ smoking. 
I'm about to be a part of coalition DJs and start doing gigs around the country after I get out the army. And if you do not want this smoke, sit your bitch ass where you at and work on your motherfucking craft, ho. I'm talking like that. Don't get in goddamn special comments talking shit like Zay. You not even like that for real, bitch. Come see me. Are you the best me? DJ in El Paso? What about MC? So if we're gonna talk about the era at that time. Rio had his time, right? When he was that nigga, he's on top. He was the old light skinned pretty nigga with the beard. He was working out in the gym or nerdy ass nigga. He had his shit. If I was to compare Rio at my time, Rio at his prime and mine and mine, I was shit on Rio easily. You talk about you at your prime and him at his prime? Shit on him easily. Big dookie turds. How? How you think? You, well, let's think about when think me. Was, uh, let's doctor. think about so so me and him was at our primes like right in the middle. So if we was to touch niggas that was in El Paso from 2013 to 2018, I think I was more interactive with the crowd. I was really talking shit about bitches and niggas and shit club. Rio was trying to, Rio was too mainstream for me. He tried to keep the shit clean, play by the rules, bitch. I go against the grain. I love and nigga. Like at that, that time period, there's a whole bunch of ratchet shit going on. God bless the ratchet. Rio could not fuck with me. Now, Rio, when he had his era, he did his thing. I'm not gonna lie to you. He, he did shit. But if me and Rio was the MC right now, I would destroy him. I got five bands on the line for that. That's a that's that's talking kind of big. Rio was the MC with me right now. He would die. If me, if me, if me, Rio was, if me and Rio was to go to a neutral site, let's say Austin, Sixth Street, at a random club, and me he was the MC, he would get destroyed. You say you got five bands on that. Five bands in Austin at a random spot in Austin, neutral spot, no El Paso, no Colleen, no none of that shit. He would get destroyed. Okay. When the last time a nigga MC did a club? Um, that nigga was an Amarillo killing cows. That nigga ain't talking no motherfuckers on the microphone. You said you said when was the last time he was he emceed at a club? He I, when the when the real last time he really emceed at a club? I thought he was still doing that. Now he's not doing this shit right now. Rio okay. is retired. He's out of the game. Rio is how old now? What his mid thirties? That nigga old. Stay in your place. Stop playing. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I don't know if I got anything else. You got you got anything else to share? This was this was entertaining. It's it might um this this is gonna be the best one because I'm a centerpiece of all this shit. Listen, this is what everybody has to understand, right? I think I think actually. I think the one that's going to get the most views. Brent? Yeah. Because he was behind every fucking thing. I think Brent is maybe going to be the best. Brent going to be the best one because he knew all the schematics and shit. But Hers I, might I, be the most entertaining. But Brent's might be the best. He's going he's gonna to have the best he's informational the information because I'm not going to lie to you. Brent, Brent, my nigga right now, and this is the thing about Brent and what a lot of people don't understand, right? Because Brent is a businessman. If I was to come to El Paso and be like, bro, I'm finna de- I, bro, let me pull up at your shit. Um, bro, you're going to have to talk to my DJs to see if you can open. Brent is the ultimate businessman at this point. If I come to El Paso just because I still got a jit out there, I either got to bring something or I got to do something for him for free. Brent got too many people in his pockets right now to try to get money out of him. I don't even want to do that shit to him. Bitch, just let me let me keep my sauce going in El Paso. Now, if he allow me to do it, he'll let me do it. If not, no. And what Rio has said in, in, in his spiel, now I don't know what had happened between Brent Rio and Rico type shit. I wasn't there for that. But fucking, because, I, yeah, Rio, Rio had said that Rio, Rico had got him out of jail, but... Rio, if you wasn't a motherfucking liability, I think Brent would have got you out of jail. Either. But if you was doing dumb shit, like I said, the Don Benjamin show, he had did that 301, he had got drunk, and then he got picked up. Rio, um, Brent not trying to spend all that goddamn money like that. Fuck, man. 
You out here doing dumb shit, nigga, you a liability at this point. Move the fuck around. But like I said, it's no beef between me and Brent. Brent just a businessman. Right. It, to, this, to this day, um, I told Brent about a couple opportunities, like, hey, you want this artist to come here and do this shit like that? Like, I really want to bring finesse two times to El Paso type shit, but you got a little DJ, bitch. I got this money because I'm the plug. I'm doing this shit. Like, come on. Like, Brent is the type of nigga because Brent, you got to think about, like, the evolution of Brent, and I fucking love it so much. College student, stop six, move to El Paso, start doing shit, then start growing businesses up under his wing. If you're not bringing an asset to Brent that is stable and liable, he's not going to fuck with it. That's why, like, when I had DJ and fucking EPTX in 2021, I believe, it was 20, yeah, it was 2021 when I had did a party, and they paid for me, they paid him to let me DJ, and them niggas flew me out. And I got to see my daughter, right, because they flew me out. Brent is not really fucking with niggas from the from the outside to come in, you have to present a product to Brent to actually do shit. You get what I'm saying? So Brent as a business, where the, the place that Brent is at now, I always fuck me. Because if I was to come to El Paso and be like, bro, let me spin, I can't charge him shit. I gotta let him, I gotta do it for free. I'm doing this shit for really got that reputation, no right, but let you me tell want, you. You don't want to put you on. God, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I got to bring something to Brent to make it seem like, okay, this makes sense. Let's do it and let's collaborate this way. Because Brent just dropped a whole TikTok. It was like, somebody came to me about a business proposal about all my failures I did. Failures is education to make you a better at the end of the day. Brent is a real, like, Brent businessman. And I loved it about Brent. I hope Brent see this shit, too. Brent... Brent is a totally different nigga from when me and you had first met him back in 2011. This ain't no little boy shit no more. Brent got kids. Brent done made mistakes and did fuck shit. Brent is damn near his 40s right now. We got to really start building shit. Like, we really got to build, like, real life, some real life shit right now. So, I would never say anything derogatory or down by Brent because he's a businessman at the end of the day. Now, like I said, everything I had stated in this interview type shit was my point of view of how I felt about niggas at this time. But like, really, Brent is like really up there. I can't tell Brent, I'm I, I'm gonna come to Brent City, bitch, let me DJ. I don't move like that. I got to come to El Paso and be like, bro, let me do some shit off GP. Let's get a little media scrum together. Let's do some shit. Like I have to really do an interview with Brent type shit. And like me and him have to have a drink and somebody record us, but like, bro, I had this shit. How you feel this shit about this? How you did that? That's just what that is. Like, Brent is like, Brent is the most, Brent is, if you was to fuck with Brent in El Paso, he's the most solid nigga there. It's just, as a businessman, that's just how he moves type shit. I was just, and I'm going to say this, I was the only nigga that had enough nuts to buck up against him. Rio ain't do shit. Trayvon ain't do shit. They dot com ain't do shit. Anybody under brick, like I grew some nuts because it was really my team that really fucking hyped me up to do the shit. It wasn't really me. Okay. So I really like I started new wave promotions because of my team. People started saying you ran Brent out of town. I said, really, if I ran him, I, I ain't run nobody out of town. I really nigga gave niggas vacation. They really, them niggas sat there and watched everything I did. And when they came back, they executed, they kicked my ass. Like, that's just what it is. Brent is a very methodical businessman, bro. Now, if you felt like now, anybody watching this, if you feel like you got fucked over by him, if he owe you some money and he did all that whole ass shit, think about it. Nightlife is a very aggressive business. If you don't want it just as bad as the next, net, next, net, next man do and not have the resource, bitch, you're going to get your ass kicked. So you can come in here with your feelings all the fuck you want, bitch, you're about to fucking lose. So don't, don't, come no feelings. Huh? don't come in with feelings. No, don't. Do not. Hey, clip this part for Brent and send it to him. Come in 
as an asset, not a motherfucking liability. If you're not making no fucking noise, and if you're not doing shit, why would you think that Brent would ask me to, hey, I see you doing some shit right now. You can come fuck with me. I told the nigga no because my pride was fucked up. I was like, bro, I'm on top of the world now right now. Let me do my thing. Slim came back. Chewy started coming into the club. Nigga started doing shit. I said, oh shit, bitch, my days is numb. I'm fucked up. Barcode open. Barcode open. I popped bottles with OT. Then went to back nine. I went to party with the niggas at back nine. I ain't got no hate and animosity towards Brent. Brent just played the game different. Brent played the game to his advantage for him and his people to eat. That's it. That's all. Okay. So if we really, like, if you was to really talk about the real center points about Night Night Knife in El Paso, it's really Brent. If you can get EJ, if you can find that nigga, then it's me. Um, Rio had a glass ceiling. Rio, I'm sorry, but you wasn't going to be nothing more than motherfucking NC. And me and you can get on this bitch together and we can really talk shit. But I'm like, I'm really going to see him ask me, like, bitch, what the fuck was you going to do other than take your shirt off and flex your little muscles and your little pectorals and shit and do whatever the fuck else? Like, nigga, you had a glass ceiling. You didn't break it. I broke every glass ceiling that was above my fucking head, bro. You can't say shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You had a ceiling on you. I mean. And I, and I, and, and, and okay. And, and I'm going to say this. Right yeah. And, I, and I'm, and I'm going to say this right now, Spencer. The night that Rio had got arrested at the Don Benjamin concert, I seen the nigga get arrested. Now, let me ask you a question. The nigga that I'm riding against just got arrested on some dumb shit for a DUI. Nigga, I'm not finna put no money towards you and you my motherfucking competition. Bitch, sit your ass in jail. Let somebody else get you out. Yeah, I said it. That's how I felt back then. Fuck that nigga. That's how I felt back then. Fuck that nigga. I knew you got arrested before you before you win the group chat. Yes. No. You did? Nigga, it was you ain't me. T- did you tell anybody? It, or was, you, it was me. Care. It was me, the bitch I was fucking, my nigga Cheney, and somebody else. I was driving the Grand Paula back then. We literally drove a block and a half down the street. The police had Scott them stopped his ass. They stopped him. Before anybody in the group chat knew that he had got arrested, I knew. The reason why, now Brent and Rio can correct me on this. You out here driving drunk. What good is that going to do for Brent? You're posing yourself as a fucking liability. And he said, oh, Rico was the one that had got me out of jail. That's, that's all I'm going to say after that. I knew you got arrested, but bro, you almost tried to kick my ass after I said some shit at Black Pearl about you. Oh, oh shit, nigga, you got some clothes. His baby <laughs> mama had bleached all his clothes, and when the night that nigga came in the club, I was the MC, and I said, oh shit, Rio, you got some clothes. After the club clothes, that nigga tore off a part of the marble bar he told her you ain't you ain't you ain't say that you ain't say what you said the first time when what you missed it the first time you didn't say what you said you did okay, so the second you time me and Rio had the bleach clothes and i do kind of like vaguely remember okay know, so his Xbox Rio, had po- Rio had you posted on facebook you, you up in, you up in the club on the mic talking about that nigga got some clothes after I so got that's, that's all i said after this fuck nigga just had posted that his baby mom bleached all his clothes, I ain't gonna lie to you, Rio was clean in the bitch when he came in that bitch. So when I saw him, I said, oh, oh, uh, shit, shout out to my nigga Rio. He got some clothes in this bitch. <laughs> that nigga got mad as fuck. At the end of the night, fuck that bitch ass nigga's ass. I'm finna whoop his motherfucking ass. Fuck that nigga, security grabbed him. This nigga took his hand and grabbed the edge of the bar and ripped some marble off. Bro, that's about to be you. Strong bitch. Bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. I had some shit on me that was gonna fuck Rio up. I stood there just as calm. I ain't gonna tell you if it was a knife or a blade or some blast knuckles or some shit, but if Rio would have ran up, he would have got, I would have touched his ass at least one time and then he would have mopped my shit, but he would have felt me out. Rio was on that type of time. The next week, that shit had happened. So the Saturday, we made amends. 
Then the next week, I was being petty. I had my home team, plus the niggas I applauded the turkey with. When Rio was emceeing, everybody in the club was like, we want Zay. We want Zay. We want Zay. Uh, we no. want Zay. Yes, I was petty like that. That nigga had to feel that shit. If Rio would have tried to come and touch me that night, I ain't gonna tell you, I would have sliced the fuck out that nigga. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had some on me. That's why I was standing there just as calm. Now he could probably get on here later and be like, Zay ain't had no shit. I was about to beat the shot and then fuck you was it. <laughs> well, guess what? Nigga, never- talk, nigga, your baby mama just bleached all your shit. Then you come to the club with some fresh shit on. I'm on the mic like, oh shit, my real, my real got some clothes on. That nigga maybe, she missed, maybe she missed a couple. Nah, that nigga had to get some new shit, nigga, because got their soccer fucked all this shit up. <laughs> he had to go get a club fit same day. Nigga, oh, bro, on phones he did. <laughs> bro, show this shit. Hey, show this boy strictly the real. Because he know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> and then that next week, I had all my niggas that was with me from fucking goddamn um, Char- uh, uh, Charlie 552 in the building. And then when Rio came in, that nigga was like, real shit. Bro, I had, bro, I, had, I was 11 deep. That night when Rio ripped that part of that marble off that bar, I said, hey, I need all my niggas coming in this weekend. And we about to weep mob. Fuck that nigga. We mobbed and it came in there and see how many. Bro, we were literally, the dance floor is like this. And so fucking all my niggas was up here lined up in this bar. He in the, he in the DJ booth. D, he in the DJ booth MC. We all standing like this. That nigga had ran by the bar. He looked at me and I was like, yeah, even that night when I had some shit like, oh shit, Rio, you got some clothes, huh, nigga? That, that nigga, bro, that nigga got 38 hot when I said this shit because he just posted on Facebook with his baby mom bleached all the clothes. Mm. That nigga was hot. That nigga wanted to fuck me up, but I had some shit on me that night because, mind you, I'm the NC. I don't get patted down at the door. I'm Zay, let me in. He know what I had on me. Hold the fuck Rio up that night. If you let this big ass nigga fucking demolish me. I got to put some cuts and wounds on this fuck ass nigga. But me and Rio, we cool now. That's some shit Rio don't know. But yeah, nigga, I would have fucked you up there now you would have touched me. I'm going to fuck you up, nigga. Now, nigga, fuck you. I didn't even get paid that night for MCing because that nigga broke the goddamn bar because he in his fuck ass feelings about what I said. So tell that fuck nigga that shit. He remember that night. Oh, mad as fuck. That nigga Brent was like, Make the nigga real mad. He broke the bar. You know, you got a part in this shit too, nigga. I can't pay you, bro. You gotta go home. Damn. Bro, we talking about mad, bro, mad. I was tired. I said this bitch ass nigga to tore up half of the goddamn bar trying to whoop my and mind you, I was not playing pussy. Wasn't nobody around me. All my niggas had left at the time, bro. I'm standing at literally black. You've been in black pearl before. When you walk in the door, there's a wall. You can go to the left or the right. You know, when you go to the left, it's the DJ booth and the dance floor is to your right, looking at the other side of the club. You walk to the left, the DJ booth is to your me, to your right, and you look to your left. Damn, I was standing right there. I was what, bro, Rio, when he came to the world, I was fuck Rio ass up. I cut that nigga about three, four times. That big ass nigga, you think you walk up on me? You think you about to dog me? He for dog me, nigga. I'm about to fuck your ass up. He even go to the hospital that night, respectfully. Rio don't know this. That's why I'm saying this shit. Like, I, I had that shit on me. I had a nice little blade on me, too, bitch. Nice and sharp, too. I would have whipped that bitch off. That was like for Rio or for anybody? Not just for anybody. I always, I always came to the club with some shit because I never got packed. Like, once I realized, like, I was emceeing, I never got packed down. They was like, oh, that's Zay. They let me in the club. I just want to start bringing shit in the club. Mm-hmm. Rio would have got fucked up that night. And then the next week, that's when I had all my niggas in the club with me. Everybody was like, "We Rio was emceeing, and motherfuckers was like, we want Zay. We want Zay, bro. You ever seen Rio mad before? That's when, I, when you want that nigga in Tekken, that nigga got mad. He got madder than that when you did this shit. I've never seen him really mad. Um, so. I don't see Rio get pissed off at me. Now. Like, that nigga Rio wouldn't really would stomp mud hole in my ass. I pissed that nigga off twice. And you got to think about the big, that big, strong, light-skinned ass nigga. Like, bro, he was moving security guards out the way trying to whoop my ass that after I said, I said, because mind you, the nigga clothes, shoes, and all that shit had got bleached. 
This nigga come to the club fresh as hell. I said, oh shit, my nigga Rio and this bitch got some clothes. Pissed him off. Nigga, you just posted shit on Facebook, bitch. Like you left it open for the public to see. I, all I said was saying something about you want to whoop my I just stood there. I didn't nigga, nigga had a bad day and you playing. He trying to come to the club to um escape. I didn't give a fuck about that shit at that time. I didn't give a fuck. I was being petty. Yeah, we see. I ain't give a fuck about that, man. I'm about to grow me a blonde fro. Get this shit dyed again. That's my yeah. niggas can't have shit. Hmm? That's, that's why niggas can't have shit. Are you, you mad because you can't do it? You know what? You can actually do this in the army. Because yeah, the natural. There's an actual warrant in my, in my brigade, nigga. He got the blonde shit with the curls and the black at the bottom. He got shit. I like it. That's too much goddamn work. It's a natural hair color, so I mean shit. If if I knew natural that, for who? Not you, bitch. But it's natural though. It don't it don't gotta be natural for you. I should have been doing this shit when I was in. I could have did this shit. No six seventy dash one one act back then. I can't wait till you edit this right, movie. You should have seen um Brandon. He had the gummy and shit. Like he be borderline doing all that shit, like doing crazy shit. Well, you know he retired now. He didn't get his time. But he was doing. He been doing that shit for a long time though. He did a shark fin and all that shit, Ari. I've known uh, Carrington since when I was in Savannah. It was my first duty station, so it was like 2008, and that was that was him. Him and there was another guy named Tremel. Tremel had like the box. She used oh, to be shit. rag, so people can't say nothing because I mean, hey. You was in regulation, so you can't fuck with it. Yeah, it's in the it's in the regs. You Clip say you can't wait till I edit it. Clip this Rio. You knew what time it was when I came Bruh, in the same I, Don't worry about what's getting clipped. Shit is getting clipped. Hey, Rio, you knew I'm Rio. Clip some shit up. Rio, you knew what time it was when I came in the scene, nigga. You'd have been had your time already, and I came and replaced you respectfully. You ain't gonna I'm, gonna, I'm gonna clip some shit up. Oh, shit, I gotta put my MacBook on the charger. Hold on. Get down the charger. No, but this nigga keep getting up. <laughs> Man, fuck you. I'm, I'm gonna clip some shit, though. Rio 2.0. That's what they was calling you. You was Rio Jr. Right. Yeah. Nah. It, it was really like it like that era at that time when I had came in, bro. Um the era that had came in was a really the transition between me and Rio. I think Rio had his time. Cause I'm gonna say Rio came in game in like 2008, 2009, and Rio had his little run. And and and, and pass the torch, whole ass nigga. Like that's how I felt back then. Like I said, everything I said in this goddamn story interview was from my point of view. Now this might feel some type of way because I might have always had some shit for this and woo off the bell. But bitch, that's just what it is. This is what it was. I know I can't come to El Paso right now and tell Brent, hey, I'm 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 seeing my daughter this weekend, nigga. Let me come DJ. I know I'm gonna have to do it off GP, but if I use my Zeus network, my Zeus network plug, or do some crazy shit like that, I have to like. If I come to Brent right now, you like, got a Zeus network network plug. plug, huh? You got me. You got a Zeus network plug. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's that? Uh, what's that show, Lando Brown? On is he? Is he on uh, Zeus? Bad Boys Texas. Is that is that Zeus? Yes. Get me on there. You, you the plug? Blood. I'll, I'll just bro. I can text it. I can text the motherfucker. I can text the motherfucker. Can you whoop niggas ass? Bro, we'll find out on Zeus. Look, I'll, I let me let me find out with it. That bitch ain't calling me back. I, I've home. never seen that show. I just know he's on there. Cause people be saying. He on there be looking lost and shit like that. But if it's like um the bad girl shit, it's just messy shit, right? I'm I'm good at that. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me see something. I'm messy. Let me do this, Nick. Cause 
Cause, cause how ass niggas think I just be out here playing? I'm really like it, nigga. Hold on, watch this. You can clip this if you want to. Am I watching something or listening to something? You said watch it. Uh, the next bet. I think they're gonna do. I think they're gonna do Bad Boys East next, and you can easily hop on that hoe. Um, I'm putting Detroit Barbie on on Bad Girls. They ain't doing Bad Girls East. You could do Bad Boys West type shit. Bro, what am I supposed to be listening to? It's probably the phone call, but she didn't answer type shit. Let me take my shot. See you know. Because I don't even lie to you, I got hold on um. Bad Boy South in Houston because they spoke and did some shit at South by Southwest. I was DJing it and they didn't pull up. I did some shit with DJ Slim Thick out of uh, Kansas City. I got Ken Folk in Kansas City, so I'm gonna do some gigs in DJ Kansas City. Slim Thick. She in Kansas City. I'm gonna see you on Instagram. Oh, that's like, that's a woman. Okay. Oh, so, oh yeah, a lot of what these whole ass niggas don't know what the fuck I be doing. I've been really been networking and shit out of Central Texas and doing some shit. Um, my upcoming gigs coming up. I got um, Corpus Christi. That's the beach city in Texas. For next do two times, you want to show out there July second, and I'm actually DJing. Y'all about to get that nigga stunt double. Y'all seen the shit he just pulled? If he send that nigga concert, he dead, bro. We're not, we're not paying for that shit, bro. We're gonna right. take. We're gonna take. We're gonna. Take, we gonna, we gonna those niggas get paid up front. Okay, so what you don't understand is, and me fucking with Tiny is, is that when we do shows, clip this. So Tell when we, you me to clip everything. I'm clip everything because I don't care because they know the game too. So we want to book an artist or a major artist. We have to do a percentage of what the fuck they do, right? So. We have to pay a percent. We have to pay like ten to fifteen percent to lock the day in, and then what they do on the back end is try to sell out the tickets and shit. And then we they try to try to book all the tickets and pay them their back end when they get here. So, say for instance, an artist is forty thousand dollars, right? You have to do ten percent of that. You have to pay four grand, and the rest of that forty grand you have to pay. You have to do your ticket sales. Your, Outside of your production, the venue, and all the other shit, you have to pay them they, the rest of that 40 grand outside of the deposit. If it's 10, 15, 20 percent, you have to come off there off the back end when you pay them. So, like, they have the rest of, have the rest of that 40 grand when they're doing shit. So, and like I said, where you're at right now in VA, VA really get a lot of shows out here, out there type shit. And I know promoters out there got money. So, um, they could pay the deposit. The way the niggas that a lot of niggas on the way on the East Coast, the way they move type shit, they already got the money up front already. They pay the deposit. They try to focus on they got them uh, profit doing the event bright and the ticket sales and the hard copy tickets and doing shit like that. So the people you was doing parties with when I was doing goddamn intro drops and shit like that when I had did it my intro drops, that shit was gonna sell automatically. So that's what I was like. I was trying to got, come out there and DJ with you, DJ out there and fuck with you type shit and bring some, like, some real Southern shit out there. They really fuck with it. Like, if, it was, if we used to bring for the for next two times charging 40 man. So you all in the 10% is deposits for a rack. You will compensate off of ticket sales, sections, bottles, and all that shit off of there. Once the rest of that four grand come in, you bring in everything profit, which is your. Your other early bird ticket sales, you're at the door, and all this shit. Now, if you're smart, if you use the book a gig, you get 10% of the bar, and then you take everything at the door. For the next two times in Virginia, you should easily make about $80,000 profit if you do it right. Big Tiny showed me the game. Okay. So if you and so if you making the money that you make, which I'm not going to disclose out here, so say for instance, You'd be like, Zay, I want to book said artist. They only talk called 20 grand. I said, bro, what's your goal? I want to make 100 racks. Okay, what the venue, what's the venue going to lock in you got? You got to lock in the venue. You got to rent out the venue. Then you got to see what the capacity of the venue is. 
if you don't give a fuck about the fire margin, how much it is, you will push it 200 more than the original call. Then you block off a certain amount for your meet and greets. It's going to get you all the goddamn money. Meet and greets for the average artist going to cost about 150 to $300. So if Nick, you, got- you talking about some shit nobody want to hear. Okay. We talk, we were supposed to be talking about you. We getting away from it. If we done talking about you, we done. But now, now it's just like you just talking and you just rambling about, about so, what, uh, so what other questions you got about what book I, nobody? I don't need to know none of that information. You I, I was just, I was just putting, I was just putting I put no nigga, okay? You just rambling and like, come on, you you get you're supposed to be the best, and you got these little drop points because you just and I know what's gonna happen. All this wild shit you saying on here. Later, you're gonna be like, Oh, I was drunk. Oh, I was drinking. Well, don't put that, that shit on you doing that when you started drinking. I knew that was gonna be your excuse, your your little escape. Oh, I was just I was drunk. Uh now this is what I hear from just people in general that you you would get drunk like this and stuff and be sleeping in the club and like you would I just sleep wild shit. Like you, you would do wild shit, and they always used to say you would just write it off as oh, I was drunk. I feel like that's the same thing that you're gonna do with this, with with some of the stuff that you've been saying. But we'll you see. Got, <laughs> you got any questions for me about El Paso type shit? No, I ain't got I ain't got nothing else. Anything else you want to share, or, or or we good here? So I so I can get the editing. My only dis- the, my only disclaimer I got for right now is for shit that I seen from my point of view. I spoke how I fucking seen the shit, but other than that, that's. I'm be trying to take nothing back. Oh man, fuck Rio. Um, if we're gonna be honest, he had his time, and that shit was gone, and it came to pass, and did all the other shit. You said that thirty times. Anything new? <laughs> <laughs> we can, uh, I mean, like, you you just said it like I don't know how many times. I could clip all the times you got them said it to make a compilation on that. Since you want me to clip shit, I can clip all the times you said that. We got it. Rio had his time. He you, he he was gonna hit his ceiling or whatever you were saying about the motherfucking ceiling. Okay. I'm just gonna say it like this, right? So. Everybody, I want to say everybody that had El Paso had their certain things, and it hit at a certain time. And I look at it as if Rio got two videos, low key. Like, <laughs> bro, Rio got his video and this video. Cause this shit was supposed to be about you, nigga. I made it by me here first. I ain't give oh, it. <laughs> Come on, Rio. You re, uh, clip this, Rio. You had your time, and you got had, two videos. You could not. Rio was not fucking with all the shit that came out at that time. Right, right. We know. We right. know. We know. All right. So, uh, I, I Yo, think. We, that- when you gonna put niggas on with each other? Cause that's gonna be the perfect one. Cause I ain't got to lie about shit. You said what? When you gonna put niggas on? Like it's gonna be like me, you, and probably like Rio and this nigga there. Cause I can call on shit then. You can call who? I call niggas on and fuck shit. They don't even stop lying. Oh, um, what he lie about? You know niggas lie about it. I know, but I mean, who what who are you calling out on what? Ain't ain't nobody said nothing. I ain't. When, you, okay, I ain't, so when, when I, Rio had said that I was chosen to kind of do this shit, I wouldn't say chosen. I would say more destined. Okay, I I can see that chosen. It, it, it was I, it was I, more I because see, I can see, I can see chosen because you're the right fit, and somebody saw that in you. I can also agree with you was destined to do it because, like I said before. I could see this you being your path. Knew me. I, I could see this being your path. When you was doing all this stuff, it was not a surprise to me. I it um I really thought 
You but when that nigga say I was chosen to do this shit, I was like, bro, like. But I can see that too. I like, already had it. I already had it in my it's, mind it's, that I could do it better like, than you. It's like people who are scouting coaches. They choosing niggas. They're seeing like, oh, that nigga got it. And yes, you was chosen. That nigga EJ, that nigga got it. He saw something in you, and he chose you. So he's not necessarily it, wrong on that. He's try, he trying to take what he said as an insult, and he and he did mean it as an insult. He meant it as an insult, but from my viewpoint, yeah, I know he meant it as an insult, but I still agree with it. Just not the way that he said it. You was chosen. You was chosen. But why was he saw was, something in you? And he chose why, you. But why wasn't he chosen? He was he chosen. Could've, he he could have easily pulled Trayvon or him to do it, but why did he choose me? He was chosen already because he was already doing it. But I ended up doing it better than him at that time in the era. His time was over with. Bitch, you old. Let's just say, like, I'm just right. going to call space. Look, you can't say that because we all get old. Everybody gets old. I don't even know why people say right. that. But if like, you, like they right. like they just stop in time and just don't age. We all get old. Well, his ass got old. Niggas gonna be saying that shit about you. That next that next MC or DJ, they're gonna be like, oh, that nigga old, he washed. Is that fair? Never, because I'm never washed. Hey. Nick Young my bro, bro, I put I put three racks on the line. I mean, you you, you did what place did you get it? I got I got envy. No, what place did you get in that DJ battle? Here in Colleen. Nigga, what did you place? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So instead of this whole ass nigga doing crowd selection, he did a poll on Instagram and everybody voted for me. And then he was like, bro. It sounded uh, like you didn't place first. But go ahead with the story. He was on some bitch shit because I had quit. I had, so I wanted more money where I was at. So I'm like, bro, I put it nine months in. Now you starting to get motion. I want some more money because a lot of niggas get stuck on niggas that do like service based side gigs and shit, and niggas keep staying the same price. I said fuck that nigga. Like, bro, like, I'm that nigga out here, bro. What DJ, what DJ out here can play, what DJ can, in text can outplay me? None. Zero. I guarantee you that. Hmm. Rio never became a DJ. His ceiling already got closed already. Tell hmm. Rio to pay about $3,000 in DJ equipment and tell him to come see me. His ceiling's closed. Why, yeah. why would Rio do that? And he's literally not a DJ. <laughs> Why would he do that? Then he could have grew with us and did his own shit. He didn't do it. All right. He's too busy driving drunk and doing dumb shit. So, okay. Um yeah, I don't I don't think I have anything else. I'm, I'm ready to start um editing this because it's gonna be like I mean I only did three so far. This is gonna be the longest one. This this is at least two hours long, I'm sure. So, well, I say it like this. I spoke my truth from my perspective. Y'all niggas can combat it. Say whatever y'all want on sidebars and do extra shit. I said, I said what the fuck I said. So okay. I wasn't even trying to shit on niggas, but when you fired me and did extra shit, Brett, um, I didn't know what type of time when niggas was on until like after I left and I'm not gonna lie to you, Brent is the ultimate businessman when it comes to this shit. So if I come to El Paso and tell a nigga I want to come DJ his shit, I gotta bring something to him. I just can't do no extra shit. And um Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna keep doing my industry shit with Zeus Network and my side by southwest momentum and Okay. And nigga, to be honest with you, nigga, I run Central Texas. That's all what the fuck it is. Get mad if you want to, bitch, because can't nobody. Nick can fuck with me on. If a nigga can fuck with me, DJ, bitch, put up, put up, put up four racks right now. You can't. I can go to any major city in this country and bubble easily. Because so God, you just, just the best DJ in the country. God bless the ranchers. 
you the best DJ in the country. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, we done. That's it. Take another nut shit off your damn head, bye. Yeah, I will. Um, I appreciate you coming on. This was um interesting. I wonder what people are gonna say about some of the things you said. I'm I'm ready to uh to see that because you know that's me. People people say I'm oh, yeah. comments gonna go crazy. People say I'm messy, but it's definitely gonna get clipped up, and it's gonna be in the beginning part of the video, different clips, and then into the whole thing when you drop it into it. the whole video. You're definitely gonna have more clips than probably anybody I do. I don't, I don't see anybody else talking for this long. You, you was like rambling and shit, so I think that's why it all lasted a little bit longer than it should have. That's why I can't wait till you get me, Britt, and Real gonna get into it. Like on this shit for real, for real. And I, I don't think so. But I mean, I don't know either. I so. think they sell I think they sell their beef. But like you I know. said, I ain't, got, I ain't got no beef for none of them niggas out there. I knew when I was gonna get my ass whooped. I got other people to do. I don't know the whole stories or yeah, the whole stories I, of I think Maine and Dame is gonna paint the real picture for you. Okay. Yeah, they both said they'll do it.